Director Comey, uh, the meeting in the Oval Office where he made the request about uh, Mike Flynn, was that the only time he asked you to hopefully let it go? Yes. And in that meeting, uh, as you understood it, that was, he was asking not about the general Russia investigation. He was asking very specifically about the jeopardy that Flynn was in himself. That's how I understood it, yes, sir. And as you perceived it, while it was a request that you hoped you did away with it, you perceived it as an order, given his position, the setting, and the like, and the, some of the circumstances. Yes. Uh, at the time, did you say anything to the president about that is not an appropriate request, or did you tell the White House counsel that is not an appropriate request? Someone needs to go tell the president that he can't do these things? I didn't, no. Okay. Why? I don't know. I think, the, as I said earlier, I think the circumstances were such that it was, I was a bit stunned and didn't have the presence of mind. And I don't know, you know, I don't want to uh, uh, make you sound like I'm Captain Courageous. I don't know whether you would have had the presence of mind, I would have said to the president, sir, that's wrong. I don't know whether I would have. Okay. But in the moment, it, it, didn't, it didn't come to my mind. What came to my mind is be careful what you say. And so I said, I agree Flynn is a good guy. So on the cloud, we keep talking about this cloud, you perceive the cloud to be the Russian investigation in general. Yes, sir. Correct? But his specific ask was that you would tell the American people what you had already told him, what you had already told the leaders of Congress, both Democrats and Republicans, that he was not personally under investigation. Yes, sir. That's In fact, how he was I'm... asking you to do what you have done here today. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and again, at that setting, did you say to the president that it would be inappropriate for you to do so and then talk to the White House counsel or anybody so hopefully they would talk to him and tell him that he couldn't do this? First time I said, I'll see what we can do. Second time I explained how it should work, that the White House counsel should contact the Deputy Attorney General. You told and the him president that. said, okay, then I think that's what I'll do. And, and just to be clear, for you to make a public statement that he was not under investigation would not have been illegal, but you felt it made no sense because it could potentially create a duty to correct if circumstances changed. Yes, sir. We wrestled with it before my testimony where I confirmed uh, that there was an investigation. And there were two primary concerns. One was, it creates a duty to correct, which I've lived before, and you want to be very careful about doing that. And second, it's a slippery slope, because if we say the president and the vice president aren't under investigation, what's the principled basis for, for stopping? Okay. And so I'll the leadership at, at Justice, acting Attorney General Bente, said, you're not going to do that. Now, on March 30th, during the phone call about uh, General Flynn, you said he abruptly shifted and brought up something that you call, quote unquote, the McCabe thing. Specifically, the McCabe thing, as you understood it, was that McCabe's wife had received campaign money from what I assume means Terry McAuliffe. Yes, sir. That's was what very I close to the Clintons. And, uh, and so why did you, had the president at any point in time expressed to you concern, opposition, potential opposition to McCabe? I don't like this guy because he got money from someone that's close to Clinton. He had asked me during previous conversations about Andy McCabe. Uh, and said, in essence, how's he going to be with me as president? I was pretty rough on him on the campaign trail. He and was rough on McCabe? He was rough, by his own account, he said he was rough on McCabe and Mrs. McCabe uh, on the campaign trail. How's he going to be? And I assured the president, Andy is a total pro. Um, the, no issue at all. You got to know the people of the FBI. They are not. So, uh, so then the president turns to you and says, remember, I never brought up the McCabe thing. Um, because you said he was a good guy. Did you perceive that to be a statement that um, I took care of you, I, I didn't do something because you told me he was a good guy, so now you know, I'm asking you potentially for something in return? Is that how you perceived it? I wasn't sure what to make of it, honestly. That's possible, but it, it, it was so out of context that I didn't have a clear view of what it was. Now, on a number of occasions here, you bring up, let's talk now about the general Russia investigation, okay? In page six of your testimony, you say, um, the first thing you say is, he asked what we could do to quote unquote lift the cloud, the general Russia investigation, and you responded that we were investigating the matter as quickly as we could and that there would be great benefit if we didn't find anything to having done the work well. And he agreed. He re-emphasized the problems it was causing him, but he agreed. So in essence, the president agreed with your statement that it would be great if we could have an investigation, all the facts came out, and we found nothing. So he agreed that that would be ideal, but this cloud is still... <laughs> messing up my ability to do the rest of my agenda. Is that an accurate assessment of Yes, sir. He actually went farther than that. He, he said, and if some of my satellites did something wrong, it'd be good to find that out. Well, that's the second part, and that is the satellites. He said, if one of my satellites, I imagine by that he meant some of the other people surrounding his campaign did something wrong, it would be great to know that as well. 
Yes, sir. That's what he said. So are those the other are those the on, only two instances in which that sort of back and forth happened where the president was basically saying, and I'm paraphrasing here, it's OK, do the Russia investigation. I hope it all comes out. I have nothing to do with anything Russia. Um, it'd be great if it all came out, if people around me were doing things that were wrong. Yes, as I, I recorded it accurately there, that was the sentiment he was expressing. Yes, sir. So what it bears it comes down to is the president has asked three things of you. He asked for your loyalty, and you said you would be loyally honest. Honestly loyal. Honestly loyal. Um, the, the, he asked you on one occasion to let the Mike Flynn thing go because he was a good guy. By the way, you're aware that he said the exact same thing in the press the next day. He's a good guy. He's been treated unfairly, et cetera, et cetera. So I imagine your FBI agents read that. I'm sure they did. The, your, the president's wishes were known to them, certainly by the next day when he had a press conference with the prime minister. But going back, the three requests were, number one, be loyal. Number two, um, let the Mike Flynn thing go. He's a good guy. He's been treated unfairly. And number three, can you please tell the American people what these leaders in Congress already know, what you already know, what you've told me three times, that I'm not under pers personally under investigation? Those are the three things he asked. Yes, sir. You know, this investigation is full of leaks left and right. I mean, we've learned more from the newspapers sometimes than we do from our open hearings, for sure. Um, you ever wonder why, of all the things in this investigation, the only thing that's never been leaked is the fact that the president was not personally under investigation, despite the fact that both Democrats and Republicans and the leadership of Congress knew that and have known that for weeks? I don't know. I find matters that are briefed to the Gang of Eight uh, are pretty tightly held, in my experience.